Good morning. <laughs> I'm Bill Peterson, Associate Director of Athletic Communications here at Sacred Heart University. I'd like to welcome you all to Sacred Heart University today. We will take your questions after a few opening remarks. At this time, please let me introduce Jim Barconero, Se Senior Vice President of Athletics and Student Affairs. Jim. Thank you, Bill. Wow, there's a lot of people here today. If uh, the media would indulge me for one minute, it was about 20 years ago that a baseball man, player, coach, I had a chance to meet a little bit out of the blue. And that person was Don Cook. And Don jo joined us when we were expanding athletics. We were, we were a school and we still are a school. They really believed that all the student athletes that are out there, we thought that athletics could help us as a school grow, thrive, uh, help brand the place. And uh, we were doing a search, and then all of a sudden in our own backyard, right down the street in Black Rock, was Don. With Division I experience, uh, as everyone knows, I believe, at Fairfield U at the time at Hartford. And Don came down, joined us, helped navigate us through that continued expansion, and most importantly, helped us navigate through the Division I uh, landscape, which uh, no one on this campus had any expertise with. So with that done, we got a good run, Coach. You and I. So here we are today, and once again in our own backyard, we've got another baseball man. I don't know how often that happens, at least for someone like myself in a career. And we're happy today to obviously be introducing Bobby as our new Executive Director of Intercollegiate Athletics. I know everyone in the room is familiar with Bobby's background, his numerous accomplishments and awards, so I won't take the time to list them all today. Needless to say, however, this is a significant and it's a wonderful moment for Sacred Heart University and its athletics program. We have, a, we have accomplished an incredible amount as a young Division I institution and with Bobby's presence now and his arrival, we're now be primed to take that to another level, both regionally and nationally. Bobby's a leader. Bobby brings great energy that I've learned. And Bobby brings in, to the campus a proven entrepreneurial track record, three critical attributes, which I know will resonate immediately on campus and throughout the region. So for all these reasons and many more, it is my great pleasure to officially announce that Bobby Valentine has accepted the position of Executive Director of Intercollegiate Athletics here at Sacred Heart University starting July 1st. So please let me introduce to you our president for a few comments, Dr. John Patillo. Thank you, Jim. I'm going to be uh, brief. Uh, reporters certainly aren't interested in what I have to say, and the students hear me all the time, so we can move on. But I, first, before saying about Bobby, I, I too want to add uh, Don, uh, 20 years, great record. When I first came as uh, interim, Don said to me, uh, I think I'm going to retire. That was two years ago, and I figured let it sit for a while, and a year went by, we went to the NEC conference presence, and he said it again and we let it go, but uh, it was time for, for him and I want to thank you, really, not only for what you've done for us, but what you've done for intercollegiate sports. You have really brought character and dignity, and as our representative, actually, most of you may not realize, Don represented the athletic directors to the conference. So, uh, again, uh, thank you, and uh, you'll be around, so we're not putting you off. We're known as the pioneers, clearly. And once again, we are pioneer. We're doing something unconventional and uh, I think excitingly so with the appointment of, uh, of Bobby uh, as our AD. <clears throat> I remember when Bobby and I started talking about the possibility, uh, I said to him, the primary, primary issue for me is that we are a service to our students. Um, that's what we're here for. And with that, two things he needed, a clean program and students to graduate. 
everything else will fall into place. There are other things I certainly will have Bobby do for us for sure. But with that, uh, we began our conversation. And as Jim mentioned, Bobby became more and more excited. And he really was getting us more and more excited about uh, his vision, his opportunity, that he, the opportunities that he saw that were before him. So I want to welcome you, Bobby. I, I've told you just even before we came over here, these students are going to make you excited about being in this role. And I'm sure they won't disappoint you uh, in that. So with that, I'd like to now hear from Bobby, who is our new AD as of July. Bobby. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Students, thanks for coming. I know uh, it's in the middle of class, so I'll, I'll try to be short with my uh, little talk here, and then hopefully the questions will not keep you uh, away from class, because as, as John mentioned, uh, obviously you're here for uh, one reason. You're in this building because you hope to learn something today. You hope to be part of something moving forward, and uh, I'm excited and proud of the thought to be with you as you move forward. Uh, Don Cook's sitting here in the front, and um, one of the questions that obviously is going to be asked is, what, what the heck do you know about uh, what's going on around here? Well, just for the record, Don and I did clinics together at Hartford. It must be over 30 years ago. He was a uh, mentor. He was one of the names that I would mention as I would travel around the country and try to make myself credible uh, when I was a young coach and when I was a young manager, uh, his, his name resonated with uh, class and uh, experience. And I'm, I'm just so happy to think that uh, I could be following in his footsteps, that I could be uh, leaning on him. As he said, he's going nowhere. He's going to be here. He lives down the street. And uh, uh, as my learning curve uh, progresses he says he's going to be there to push me along so Don thank you very much for everything you've done and thanks ahead of time for what you're going to do to add to my uh, to my future um, when I was a kid my uh, brother uh, was my inspiration and he happened to be a catcher in high school um, there was a guy in the same division who was a much better catcher that my brother kept saying wait until you go and see Dave bike play and as a 14 and 15 year old I got to go to uh, Cabetta Stadium when Notre Dame would come down and uh, play against Wright Tech and I saw this big catcher with a great arm and great power and uh, followed him throughout his career in the minor leagues um, sent a little telegram for his 500th win and it's uh, great to be on campus with him and I see Nikki sitting down next to him um, you know I saw some uh, foolish talking head on TV say oh how about that Bobby Valentine's going to the university geez his baseball coach really has to watch out well that fool didn't know that I had Nikki's picture on the wall of my restaurant in in Milford uh, in a very uh, place of honor and uh, I appreciate everything he's done thus far uh, here with the pioneers and I can't wait to be uh, at his uh, beck and call for anything that he needs um, and other people who are in need that as John said I'm here just to facilitate uh, Don has done a wonderful job of moving this program along uh, getting uh, students uh, in, an, in a, an environment that uh, they can succeed and be happy in uh, and and I'm hoping that I could fill those needs and fill those voids that will be uh, gone after uh, July 1st so uh, again honored to be here I know there's going to be questions um, uh, I see Bill Mitchell's here in in the middle of the room um, uh, I've known Bill for a long time uh, one of the reasons that I think John uh, liked me at the beginning is because I told him that I could tie my own bow tie. And he says, as long as you buy them at Mitchell's, it's okay. And uh, it's good to see you, thank you. Um, so, indeed, the, uh, the family atmosphere that I've experienced so far is something that I'm uh, 
truly looking forward to experiencing in the future and um, I hope that I could be a, a brother to some, a father to others, a mentor that, to those in need, and a, a friend to, to everyone here on campus. So I guess with that... Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. And uh, we will now take some questions. We have a mic, a uh, wireless mic. Excellent, Connecticut Post. Bobby, at this point in your life, wh wh why do you want to be an athletic director at Sacred Heart? And, and um, you know, some people think this is kind of a joke and stuff like that. And what can you say about people not taking you seriously as an athletic director here? Ouch. <laughs> That's the guy who broke the story so, <laughs> so that he could get uh, his name out in the news, you know? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's amazing. The press is amazing. I, if, if it's a joke, it's an inside joke. Uh, I'm, I'm very serious about everything I do in my life. Um, I deal with um, passion and commitment and I deal with uh, excellence. And um, uh, I really didn't think I'd be insulted at the, with the first question, but um, what the hell? I guess that's the way it goes. Mike, you told me that. You told me, oh, you got a good crowd out there, huh? Thanks, Mike. <laughs> PR directors always take care of you. Um, but, you know, at this juncture in my life, at this juncture in my life, I feel I'm, I'm in the middle of my life. I'm, uh, I'm a guy who loves to do things, um, a, a guy who loves challenges. Uh, you know, I was a ballroom dancer uh, during the uh, Babe Ruth League uh, state and regional championships. Uh, you know, I was a third base coach uh, first day in, uh, of a season and I never coached third base before. I was a manager at 35 years old and I never managed before. I, uh, opened up a restaurant in 1980 and I never flipped a hamburger before. Uh, I do things that are presented to me so that I could be challenged and th that I could strive for excellence every day and I think that this is a very challenging position. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll laugh a lot but it won't be because uh, of anything except for a mutual understanding of the situation. Hi, Bobby. Chris Ellsbury, Connecticut you, Post. Doing, bro? I'm good. Um, there were probably several candidates that had a lot more experience at this. I mean, you've never done anything like this before. What, what, like you said, the passion aside, what do you think you can bring to the table here to take this university to the next level, like Jim said? Well, I don't know about taking it to any next level. I, I could just tell you that, um, you know, a lot, a lot of things are taught. Uh, in this environment but the one thing you can't teach is experience and uh, I have a uh, boatload of life's experiences I've lived in five different countries I've spoken different languages I've um, um, been fired I've been up I've been broke I've been rich I've uh, uh, have things that I think um, every person in life wants to um, experience and I can't experience those things for anyone here, but I think that I could share my experiences and make uh, the situation better. Um, I'm learning um, what it is that needs to be done here, uh, and I'm going to learn uh, as quickly as I can and as for as long as I can uh, how to maneuver and, uh, and, and accomplish the things that need to be accomplished. I don't know if there's any most or least, you know, uh, I'm, I'm very anxious to learn all of the people who are, uh, are within the department, you know, they're, you know, with, with 31 uh, Division I teams and 24 coaches and uh, a, a staff uh, under Don at this time of, of uh, 80 plus people, uh, I'm, I'm anxious to learn their names, their responsibilities and find out what their needs are. Uh, that I could start to try to fulfill. Hi, Bobby. John Nash from the Norwalk Hour. Accepting this position, what does that say as far as your professional baseball career? Like, if a team comes calling in the next two years, do you still listen because you don't know what opportunity it might take? Or are you looking at the 10-year window here if everything works out great? Oh, um, you know, I 10-year window. I've had a lot of contracts in my life. I had... Um, I had a lifetime contract once in Japan. Uh, I found out it was the lifetime of the owner's dog. Um, uh, so I, I don't, 
I don't, I don't deal with uh, a whole bunch of things that we have to deal with in the future. I deal with today, and I'm very excited what I'm doing today. And as uh, uh, John and I uh, talked about, you know, what kind of term is this? It's, it's a term that will last until we are no longer mutually beneficial to each other. And uh, that's just fine with me. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, if some team calls, I always answer the phone. That doesn't mean that I'm going to uh, rush to judgment and, and run away from a situation that I think is a very good situation. Bobby, no offense with uh, News 8 uh, in Connecticut here. Uh, obviously, you can tell by how many people are here uh, how your fame is going to bring immediate exposure to the athletic department here at Sacred Heart. Have you thought about how you can immediately take advantage of that fundraising or in any other ways? Uh, no, but um, I'm, I'm hoping that, um, you know, the things that uh, I have touched in the past uh, and uh, the associations I've made, the people that I know, um, can facilitate uh, everything that we, we might try to do here, whether it's, um, you know, fundraise or um, win a baseball game. The next question for Jim and John. Um, under Don's tenure, you guys have always taken kind of an approach where wins and losses aren't the priority of the athletic program, and you want to run you know, good, clean programs and stuff like that. With Bobby coming in and having a little more exposure on the athletic programs, will that philosophy change, or will you guys continue to do what you did with Don in terms of your coaches and, and how you evaluate them? Did we say we didn't want to win at any point in the past? Oh, okay. I just want to make sure of that. Uh, I think we have a philosophy, Bill, you know this, that with Don and myself, we knew we had, we've had, we've got great coaches that want to win, and they've recruited athletes that want to win. So for Don and I to worry about whether our teams are going to be winning, we left that to our coaching staff and to our athletes. Because at the end of the day, and Bobby's referenced it, and our president's referenced it, it's the experience in the classroom. You hear a lot of the experience in the community certain that they graduate and if we as administrators take care of that I think the winning will take care of itself now with Mr. Ballantyne here um, there is probably going to be some insight that he has as a nationally and internationally known baseball manager that may assist our coaches in the way in which they go about recruiting in the way in which they go about their training that will be seen in time but uh, no, winning is still important Always will be. <coughs> Anyone else? It's <coughs> 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 good, Joe. <coughs> you should have gone with the bow tie. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> okay, um, no, no, no plans to open a, a restaurant on campus. <laughs> but the one that I have down in Stanford uh, that's 32 years old is um, something that I'll keep. And, and in case that question will, uh, is anyone's mind, <clears throat> we discussed that I do many things in my life. And um, one of the first things uh, that was one of the first hurdles we um, overcame was the fact that I'll continue to do uh, many things and um, you know right now I'm the senior uh, sports analyst for M <coughs> NBC radio I'll have that a show all year all baseball season and I hope to bring that show to campus where uh, maybe some of the students can uh, get involved with it and uh, maybe some of those in in that field of work can uh, get some accreditation and some uh, appreciation for what what goes on um, so again a, a sharing and a mutual beneficial situation might be created there hi Bobby Jeff Jacobs Hartford Current uh, as an analyst and a uh, person who's been around sports a lot the the NCAA is a huge organization with a lot of pros and a lot of cons and I was wondering if you've developed any particular or specific views of how that organization works or doesn't work. And 
various ways. Well, as you said, I think huge is an operative word, and when you're when you're so big, there's probably a lot lot of things that uh, uh, cause problems, and a lot of things that uh, facilitate uh, what they're trying to do. So I'm going to learn about that. I saw how big uh, the rules were. Uh, luckily, I'm stepping into a situation where that's being condensed, and I'm reading the con condensed version. <laughs> okay, and uh, once I get that, uh, I'll, I'll probably be better educated to answer that question. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you all for coming today. And again, welcome to uh, Bobby Valentine, uh, the new executive director of athletics here at thank Sacred you. Heart. Get to class. Thank you. <laughs>